106 FM, רדיו הרצופים. דוקטור ג'קל ומיסטר היי, רדיו הרצופים, 106 FM, ירושלים. בכל יום שני, משעה 10 עד 12. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Mr. Hale? Yeah. This is uh, 106 FM, Jekyll and Hyde. Uh, Oren and Oded are on the line. How are you? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> Great. <laughs> sorry, sorry, it's <laughs> early here, dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. First of all, we want to congratulate you on uh, your first uh, solo record that's, that came out uh, on the 12th. Oh, thank you very much. Awesome, thanks. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's amazing, and I, I think it's uh, been a long time coming. We've been expecting a record like this for a while, and while we love uh, a lot of your projects, this, this solo record is just, I don't know. Yeah, it blew us away. We were talking about it before as being one of the best records, if not the best records, uh, this year that came out. Oh, thank you very much. That means a lot. Uh, I definitely uh, put everything I... in the time during making into it <laughs> yeah it sounds like hard work yeah it was it definitely was and like you know and then and everybody else that played on it and stuff really worked hard I, I feel like to make it something that was special or you know I, I definitely feel like it's for sure the most focused and fully realized uh, uh, inter- interpretation of like what I'm trying to achieve with music and stuff up, up to date so I'm pretty excited about it
Great. Uh, how long have you been working on this record? Mm. Officially, I started it uh, back in like December of 2006. But then, um, you know, I had to, in, in the beginning stages, I, I had to, you know, do a, like work on it for like a month here, work on it for a month there and stuff. Because in between touring and stuff with like Hella and Marnie Stern and all these different people in 2007. But once I finished uh, Marnie, Marnie's tour in the summer of 2007, I really started, uh, that's when I started going kind of full blast on it and um, like, you know, not doing anything else but focusing on that. And then I, so I did a big, a, a really large amount of the basic tracking um, from like September of like 2007 up to like uh, December 2007. Then I had to go on tour again and then uh, from January up to like March of 2008 this year, I uh, I completed it. So okay, um, but yeah, so it was kind of like a long process of like different really focused periods and stuff. But then like the last couple months were like is pretty much where like it all kind of came together. Like I had the whole vision of it kind of um, stitched up. So. Um, did you collaborate? Uh, how many people have you collaborated with on this album? Overall, oh, man. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, quite a bit. Uh, mm -hmm. It's kind of weird though because it worked in so many different ways. Uh, you know, like a lot of some some people, certain people came in uh, and to the studio, and it was like an environment where like it was like a we just you know worked on songs like live in the same room for you know for a day or two, you know, and then and uh, and then others it was like I already had tons of you know, the bulk of the song already completed. And then I had an idea of like what kind of thing I wanted, to, uh, you know, uh, like, uh, or I had a general concept of like for them to overdub and like play on top of what already existed for and stuff like that, you know? So it was like, uh, every collaboration was kind of a different type of thing, you know? Uh, some of it like, like was more like feeling more like a band situation where we were actually like riding together in a room and then some of it was like just like them adding to what already existed so i would say total of maybe there was like uh, uh 10 other players or something like that mm -hmm. somewhere around there okay um, I have to ask you before we go on, um, we've just talked about your solo record, but I know a lot of people are thinking about and worried about, uh, I guess worried is the right word, um, whether Hella are going to put out another record or not. Oh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I wouldn't, I definitely wouldn't worry about the, I mean, Hella will, or at least in where, to my understanding, I definitely mm -hmm. plan on, yeah, we, I mean, we will put out another record. It's, you know, it's tricky. It's like Hell is a group that, uh, well, at the, in this point in time, I feel like we just reached a period where it was like, a, <clears throat> you know, after almost like getting a, close to a decade of being together and, mm -hmm. and working so much together every day, you know, just like such an intense period, it kind of reached a point to where uh, it exhausted itself and needed a, <clears throat> some some room to, to breathe and, you know, like basically like a break of sorts and stuff. So, and I feel like Spencer feels the same way. And so we haven't really discussed, like, as far as, like, you know, both of us are kind of taking our time to do our other things and, like, you know, um, stretch out a little bit. And uh, But we haven't really verbalized, like, the right period to to come back together and start doing something. But, you know, Hell is a band that I, I would never see stop making music because mm -hmm. it's so um, natural for us to do that and, and uh, so easy just, you know, essentially it just being the two of us there's no need to ever be like oh that's it you know what i mean it can just be open and 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 when it when the time's right it, it exists and when it's not right it doesn't at that time and stuff you know so but i would definitely be excited about i mean i've already been thinking about that as far as that like as far as like the next color record and stuff and mm -hmm. been kind of getting excited about like what that would even be because i'm sure it'll be a lot different than anything we've ever done as usual <laughs> but <laughs> right.
maybe we can uh, we can uh, go back a while to the to your childhood and uh, maybe you can share with us uh, when did you first uh, pick up uh, drumsticks or was it uh, a different another instrument uh, how did you start uh, with music um well uh it's kind of weird because i didn't you know i, I grew up in a um And my no one in my family everybody in my family really loved music you know like listening to it and stuff but no one played music I didn't grow up in a in a music with a musical background of any sort you know like I didn't have that around me other than my parents listening to records and stuff and like they had good taste and things but I didn't even really it's weird I didn't really even understand the concept of that you could play music I always like appreciated it from a distance and 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 like you know was really inspired by listening to it, but I didn't even understand like, oh yeah, maybe I could do that till I was till really late till mm-hmm. till you know I was like about fourteen years old or so mm-hmm. up until that point, I was really into like you know art and and uh drawing and painting and skateboarding and all those kind of things and then around that time, um I had a neighbor who played drums like that lived behind me, and I could hear him all the time playing drums and stuff, and then uh he was kind of older than me and stuff and uh then I started like just thinking about it more and, 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 uh, I don't know. It was pretty weird. Actually. I, I just started thinking about when I would hear those, the drums and stuff, like I just started kind of feeling like I understood the instrument, even though physically I didn't know, uh, I, you know, I couldn't play for shit, but it's like, um, I, but I, uh, I just had an idea in my brain. of like kind of how it was working on a, you know, technically like, you know, what the rhythms, yeah. Yeah, like I kind of just like understood it in a weird deep sense and and then uh, slowly just like started to get obsessed with the idea of doing it and uh, or trying to do that and it, and it just grew and grew and I met a, I met a friend uh, uh, this other like little punk rocker kid my, that is still like a really great friend of mine mm-hmm. uh, in the neighborhood and he really wanted to play guitar and was having those same feelings so we actually had like a junk sale like a garage sale to get some money and stuff and then um And then, like he bought a guitar, and I bought a drum set, and then we just started kind of learning together <laughs> great, so you're self taught yeah. yeah, I'm self taught yeah, it's amazing. uh, do you play any other instruments besides uh the drums? um yeah, I wouldn't, yeah, I do like I mean, even on the record and stuff, I play all kinds of you know all different sorts of uh instruments and things mm-hmm. and stuff. I wouldn't consider myself. You know it's tricky, like with drums, like I actually feel like yes, I play drums, I guess, um but with other things, it's like I can play them and make noises and make sounds on them that that I'm happy with that I like, but uh in the conventional sense, I don't feel like you know i don't um uh, I wouldn't consider myself like a bass player, I wouldn't consider myself a guitar player, I wouldn't consider myself a pianist or anything like that, but it's mm-hmm. like at the same time, I can definitely like make things. you know, melodically or, or musically that I feel like are, are cool, but like, you know, in a, in a very like different kind of naive approach to it, you know? So it's like, once you understand like an, it's one instrument, I feel like, and especially one that's like really percussive, like drums, like you can take what you know from that instrument and then like adapt it to another one and kind of come up with some interesting things, just like, because you're approaching it like an instrument, like a different instrument, you know? So, yeah. that's kind of like what I've done with all those other things is like I just you know rhythmically i'm I'm pretty good uh with with things and stuff so it's like if I can find different like melodies and notes and things on other instruments and then like uh and then you know rhythmically I'm strong at it it's not like I'm playing it you know the right way or anything but I can make sense <laughs> there's no that right way cool <laughs> I, I said there is no right way. there's just yeah exactly yeah. no there's not <laughs> I know there's not but uh uh you know what I'm saying though it's like i don't I don't feel like oh I'm right. like I play this instrument, I play that instrument, I just feel like I can make sounds that I like basically <laughs> right that's the point yeah. Yeah. I that's feel, a weird yeah, too. Totally. I feel like i can compo- i feel like I'm pretty good at arranging things and composing things and like you know uh, I feel mo- a lot really confident with. essentially just like like with ideas and concepts and stuff and stuff so uh in any case it's like uh like even if uh I'm not a hundred percent confident with playing on other instruments, I feel like I am confident with like making uh something out of nothing and then a sense of arrangement and then it coming out like really 
different and cool to right. my ears, mm-hmm. you know. So. And interesting. And what about uh, vocal wise? Do you do you like singing? Uh, same thing. I that's something that was like initially I've always wanted to do that. Like, because I, I really love like singing is really fun and great and stuff, and I really like words and 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 really like melodies and stuff. I would say second to drums. That's something I feel way more confident doing. And mm-hmm. at first, it was like definitely scary, you know, because. If you've never done it, it's just kind of like one of those things where, uh, you know, it's really difficult, of course. And then also, you know, it's essentially like there's this period of like getting used to your own voice because automatically you hear it and it's kind of like, you know, hearing your own voice for the first time and stuff can really throw you off. Even if other people are like, no, dude, it sounds great. It sounds mm-hmm. great. You're like, oh, man, <laughs> you hear yourself. You know what I mean? It's like hearing yourself on an answering machine or something, you yeah. know. Yeah, or on uh, the radio. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you know, the more I started to do that, and uh, and the more you get used to it, it definitely like um, over the past couple of years when I've started to get into that kind of thing. Now I, I really like it. You know, the challenge now for me is like, uh, especially in putting together a band to play all this stuff live, uh, is learning, tr- attempting to learn to like do that at the same time as playing drums. Yeah. And that. And uh, with <laughs> that's like a whole different level of. <laughs> yeah, it seems <laughs> really difficult. Uh, yeah, that takes a lot of energy. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Very, very challenging. So, but um, yeah, I really have enjoyed um, getting into that aspect of things. It's funny, actually. I was talking to a friend of mine the other day because he wanted. He was talking about, uh, you know, I really want to start a like a like a minor threat band like a straight punk band you know like mm-hmm. one minute songs just like old school like you know just like really just like a raw like punk band i was like oh dude that's crazy because like i've always had this like romanticism about singing just singing in a band like that just because i always like you know because i love that kind of music for one but i've always been really envious of the singers of those types of bands that just to like get to purely just like freak out and express themselves and stuff it just sounds so much like so much fun and stuff so it's definitely like a fantasy of mine is just to to do that in a, in a project but do you think yeah, that would happen really, what's that do you think that could happen i mean i suppose it could and stuff but it's so weird when you're so used to doing one thing and everybody knows you as just being this one thing and stuff it's like not that i care what other people think ultimately right. but But you know what I mean. It's uh, again. It's like one of those scary things to like. Uh, you know, at, at the beginning of any ever trying something new, it's always kind of like you know, ugh, it's like kind of frightening and stuff. But you never know. It could happen like that. I definitely like you know, like I said, I second to drums. Like uh, that's definitely my second favorite thing to like do musically is to like is to sing and and you know, I just like also writing words and I like writing lyrics. Like mm-hmm. I like the whole conceptual sense of it and stuff. Right. And I, I feel like I kind of understand how that stuff works somehow. So, well, as far as uh, doing something that's not uh, out, you know, out of the ordinary, I think peop- that's what people ex- expect Zach Hill to do. You know, it's uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. If so, you huh? if you all of a sudden you do like uh, a regular pop album, that's still going to be really awkward. You know, and really weird and interesting <laughs> in that sense. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I guess that is true. That's kind of cool. Yeah, it's funny. I I know. It's, Just naturally, that's not, that's something that I've never has never been planned either for me as far as making things. I, I, you know, I guess you could see it a couple of ways as far as just always trying new things or or being totally inconsistent. <laughs> and to me, it's just like I've always been really open minded to trying right. so many things or playing with anybody and and doing anything musically because I don't I've never wanted to put any kind of like, uh, you know, uh, to me like I I don't like to like. You know, the, nothing's like not good enough for me to try out and stuff. Basically, I don't like being like, "Oh, I, I'm too cool for that," or "No, I have no interest in that and stuff." And like, I'm, you know, in the sense of like, a lot of people won't do collaborations with certain people and do play with this and that because they feel like it's like their credibility or something gets damaged and all that mm-hmm. stuff. And I've always had an open mind as far as like, no, it's like, you know, the more you do these things and the more you like try to challenge yourself and not repeat yourself, like the better you get. For me, the better I get. Like as far as just, you know, educating myself and being in situations and working with people I would normally have no idea about and stuff. So I feel like naturally that's why it's like in a lot of like the music I've made, it's been become who, pretty unpredict- unpredictable who, or whatever. Who would uh, you consider your most uh, um, surprising uh, collaboration? Well, 
some of the stuff like some stuff that I've done hasn't even come out. Like actually, like I've got recordings of of me doing like uh, you know like noise and stuff with like people like people dudes from like Maroon Five and stuff like crazy. <laughs> really? Stuff, <dude>. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I do. I've got tapes of like you know like I've got a lot of t- like recordings and things that have just never seen the light of day yet of just like playing with all sorts of people and stuff and everyone from like yeah like maroon five to like <laughs> <laughs> but it's pretty funny because like if i was to play like um you know if you if you were to hear the stuff and i never told you that you would never even ever guess and that's kind of like the, the fun thing about it is that you know a lot of times in our minds and i do it too but you know you put these things on you know you associate your brain like associates these things with like bad stuff when it's only your you know it's not it's not your senses telling you that it's just like what you're what you have attached to a certain a name you have attached to a certain thing but like if you don't know that then you understand what i mean like you know what i mean it's like you perceive it so differently and stuff so but i'd say that's a pretty weird one i'm trying to think of others well is there anyone you would like to is there any uh, person or group you'd like to collaborate with which you haven't yet um yeah yeah, there's a lot actually. I'd have to let me think about that. Like, I'm trying to think of, you know, like a childhood dream or something. Someone you'd always wanted to play with, uh, oh, dead or alive. Man. <laughs> Led Zeppelin. <laughs> um, shoot. Yeah, I've, I don't know. If I mean, if I could choose like any couple people and stuff, at least at this point in time to play with, it would definitely be like people like Ornette Coleman or like Cecil Taylor and stuff. Some of the jazz dudes, like, right. you know, the jazz dudes and stuff, like that's a whole nother aspect of music I'm really into. And like, um, I feel like that's something that would ultimately turn out pretty awesome. If like I had the opportunity to play with people, you know, people like that and stuff. Mm-hmm. And so definitely like those guys, I'm trying to think of, a. What's your what's a normal week for you like? I mean, how how many days uh, out of a week would you say you were uh, collaborating or working on music? Um, oh, seven days a week. Seven days a week, perfect. Yes, yes, yeah. No, uh, every day I play. I mean, here and there, of course, like I'll go out of town and like friend will be like, "Oh, come visit and go swimming in the you know and or you know hang out or something," and I'll go, you know, hang out with a friend for a day of just like taking you know, a break. Yeah, just, you know, listening to records and, you know, just mm-hmm. talking and whatever and stuff. But for the most part, um, um, I'm always, like, I, if I'm not doing that, if I go a couple of days without doing anything like that or not playing my, my instrument or not making something, I start to get uh, very, like, uh, depressed, actually. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah I do. I do. It's weird. Yeah. I can't handle uh, not doing it. Uh, like it's weird because it, to me it's such an exercise of like uh, you know. It's ultimately it just really makes me feel good to mm-hmm. do it and stuff. So when I'm not, you know, and it, it's my religion, so it's kind of like you know someone that's obsessed with whatever religion you want to say or whatever, and and then not not having access to their church. Right. You know, or not having, you know, not being able to pray or whatever, like, you know, for two days and stuff, I'm sure they start feeling weird about it. That's kind of how I perceive it, you know, mm-hmm. like that type of, that's like how important it is to me, you know. Right. Are you usually being approached by artists or do you go out and uh, seek uh, someone to collaborate with? Um, both ways, like both ways. It, it kind of like, I mean, there's definitely people, oh, actually, you know, a band that I would like really <laughs> love to, um, you know, that I really love and I really feel like is a very important band in this, in, in this, you know, especially in this era and this day and age and stuff that I just really respect tons and their music really strikes a chord, which would be fun to play with is Animal Collective, but that's kind of, mm. you know, an obvious, everybody kind of loves them, of course, but yeah. um, they're definitely like a group that I would probably, uh, like, you know, if I was asked to like play live in a live situation or do something like that, that's definitely something I would be like, drop everything and just do it you know just because i really believe in their music and stuff so that was sorry i just realized that but okay. <laughs> <laughs> um what uh and what was the question you just asked me uh are you being approached or uh, do you approach? oh yeah 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 um yeah here and there it's like 
random things happen all the time. You know, I, n- I was never on the computer before, um, like until this year. I just got a laptop at the beginning of the year, and before that, I didn't really even know anything about computers. I didn't, I didn't do email or anything really hardly. Mm-hmm. And since I got one, it's been pretty cool. Like, I've, it's just opened up a lot of things like that. As far as just being on the internet and like having like you know like a MySpace, all that kind of stuff. Like, however you want to perceive it, it's kind of a double-edged sword. Those types of you know social online things and stuff, but more and more they're kind of becoming a necessity, I guess, about, you know, just helping artists do, like, and spread their music and stuff, but anyways, having one of those, it's been pretty crazy, because I've come into contact with all these people that otherwise I would have had that immediate access with, and made some pretty cool relationships, like, I started working with uh, Pre-273 recently, mm-hmm. um, on some of his stuff and stuff, and that was purely just from him, like, hitting me up on the internet, and then that's, like, talking and becoming friends and um and all that and that's been really great because you know now i've like ended up recorded a couple of records with him on his projects and um i'm talking to him about him producing my next um solo record and stuff and so yeah it can work both ways sometimes you know you know people will you know come at me with you know wanting you know wanting to play or something and then a lot of times like i'll you know, if I'm in the vicinity of someone that I really respect, I'll just always put it out there like, hey, I would love to play and stuff. So, kind of both ways. Great. Um, let's see. Uh, we think that, um, we personally believe that the first uh, album that people buy has a certain influence on their musical taste or musical direction that they take. Uh, do you remember what your first album was? The first record you uh, I was actually listening to it yesterday. It was a... Uh, 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 the first tape I bought a tape when mm-hmm. I was probably about six years old. It was the Beastie Boys license to mm, Wow, that's a, <laughs> great. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, that. And I, I remember the first couple of records I had. I had that, and it was like that, and uh, 1984, Van Halen, 1984. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, just all the stuff of the era of when I was growing up. You know, all the shit that was like you know, when you're in elementary school, it's like everybody's here, you know, and I had older brothers and older sisters and stuff, or not older brothers, but older sister, younger brother and stuff, but my older sister really influenced my, my musical taste a lot too, because, you know, then once I got a little bit older, she was already listening to, you know, like James Addiction, Susie mm-hmm. and the Banshees, uh, you know, all these other, like more like on the fringe kind of music and stuff, you know, and right. introduced me to that. But at a young age, yeah, that my first tape was definitely licensed to Right. Would you borrow a lot of music from your uh, older sisters <laughs> to listen yeah, to? Ton, yeah. yeah, tons. But she was kind of more into like, cause she was into some stuff that I wasn't crazy about. Like a lot of the, you know, because she was kind of gothic and stuff and it was like <laughs> mm. the 80s and all that. So she was very into like, I mean, I like these bands more so now, but when I was like young and, you know, it was just, I didn't, it wasn't my thing and stuff, but like Depeche Mode and, you know, the Smiths and all that, mm-hmm. that whole side of, of things and new order and all that which you know i've come around to like really like and respect and stuff with that music but uh i liked a lot of the more like as you got you older know, yeah. yeah exactly early metallica kill them all was also like a very early record <laughs> i had uh, yeah. and uh but yeah so i was like more into like um also growing up right by the bay area you know in san francisco like you know it was hard not to really get into things like you know mr bungle and faith mm-hmm. no more primus was huge influence and, yeah. and you, know, you got to work with happening them afterwards right? yeah that's it's pretty what well, that's <laughs> it's pretty wild actually <laughs> yeah and then um yeah so you know like all the stuff that was just kind of like regional to me um you know was definitely like a big influence mm-hmm.
You said you uh, worked on uh, art and painting in, uh, in school as well, right before you started playing the drums. Um, is it something yeah. you still do in your spare time? Sorry, is art uh, or painting stuff that you still do in your spare time? Yeah, I still do that, totally. Um, mm-hmm. it's, it's trickier now just because, like, um, you, got, you know, it's, it's, it's tough because that's something I really am passionate about as far as like, you know, the visual arts and stuff and, right. and something I really would love to do full blast, like in the future. And like, uh, but at the time I feel like it's really hard to do both those things without one of them being compromised. You know what I mean? Like it's, uh, to put, to be creative in one realm all the time or two realms, all the, like one is, is really hard enough. I feel yeah. like so to, and two, like splitting yourself, you know, if you're really trying to go, you know, all the 110 percent in both realms it's just like for me the kind of like it just i can't do it like i need to do be doing like one of them needs to be on the back right you know what i mean kind of see it like i, I music's just like not is always first from where i'm at right now that's like first you know so mm. i would love to like be more active that in that like later on and stuff but it's like i don't really want to you know t- like do it like how I do music and stuff unless I'm like a hundred percent confident and I don't think I'd be as, you know, like as confident and like being out there with art and stuff unless I was like doing it, you know, full on. And like, that was like the only thing I was doing and, or like, you know, I was able to put into that what I'm putting into music and stuff. So I'm sure that day will probably come. But, uh, when I was younger, yeah, like before I even played music, that was like pretty much like what I wanted to do, uh, with uh like you know i was like when i was a kid like my hero was like walt disney like you know mm-hmm. i wanted to be like a cartoonist animator like uh i've always been really big into concepts even since i was very young i would imagine like worlds and like other worlds and stuff and like mm-hmm. uh you know just developing this whole realm that was like my realm just like that whole disney thing you know what i mean but like different of course but like even very early on, all my school projects were about like famous like uh, artists, cartoonists, like you right. know people that had created like big movies about like I was just really into like movies and cartoons and like you know that whole world. It's like what I saw for myself doing in life. Mm-hmm. Uh, and is it something then, you you'd still consider doing in the future, studying animation or taking part? Yeah, in that? But, I mean that would be that'd be awesome and stuff. Definitely, like my mom and stuff is always like, you need to go work for George Lucas and stuff <laughs> <laughs> on Star Wars. I'm like, I, don't, I yeah, I guess I don't know. <laughs> like, 
but my parents don't either. You know, they're really supportive of my music and stuff, but they still remember like how I, how much I was into that when I was little. And like, you know, I think they also look at it like a lucrative standpoint. Like, oh, you make so much money in the in movies and and you know art now and stuff. You should really do. You know, and I'm like, eh. and I want to, but it's like not. You know, like I don't know. Like I said, where where my heart is right now is like just it's music. Like, I, you know. Right. I'm kind of I'm obsessed with it, so it's like I can't, you know. And like I said, I can't. I don't, you know, in order to like go as far as I could go with art, like I don't. I feel like I would have to compromise other things, you know. And um, I'm, I'm not willing to do that at this point. But yeah, maybe sometime at some point. Well, it sounds like you grew up in you know an art artistic supportive house. Um, did any I of did, your other yeah. siblings go in that direction besides uh, your brother, who also played in Hella with you? Yeah, it's, uh, I was lucky in that way. The weird thing, though, is like it's, no one in my house did. Uh, I mean, my parents were really awesome and like open-minded people and mm-hmm. like great and liberal and stuff and and uh, and really like fans of like good art and fans of like good music and stuff. But no one did that, you know. Like I didn't have a any kind of a influence directly from my family because it like it's not like my my mom was a painter, or, like, my dad played guitar, or something, you know, nothing mm-hmm. like that. They were blue, like, working class, mm-hmm. you know, uh, blue collar, just like, I actually grew up, like, in a print shop, my dad was a printer, mm-hmm. um, and so, like, every day after school, I remember, like, I didn't go to daycare or something, I just hung out in the print shop with um, a bunch of, like, grizzly, like, long-haired dudes, like, <laughs> listening to the classic rock and stuff, and then <laughs> I would just sit in there and draw and, and, and work on things and stuff, but... But, I mean, so it was weird because, like, they were all very, like, um, supportive and, like, wanting me to do those kind of things, you know, be creative, because I think they recognized that, that, like, I was really into being creative and had a big imagination early on and stuff, but none of them had any, there was no background of that in my family, you know, so it was right. interesting, kind of. Um, and you said, um, I was asking about your siblings, did any of them go in an artistic direction as well, just like you? I'm sorry, what's that? Did any of your uh, siblings go in an artistic direction as well? Well, yeah, my, yeah, like to a certain extent. My cousin's just like really amazing musician and he's like my best friend. I mean, he's kind of like one, of, he's basically my brother. He's, mm-hmm. He actually played in the last um, rendition of Hello on the last record. He's a guitar player and he played on my new record too. And um, he's very serious about music and like excellent stuff. And but we were around the same age and we grew up together like, you know, all the time, even though we were first cousins, it was like, you know, basically we were at each other's house every day, you know, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, And then my sister, uh, my older sister got really into like acting and stuff and was in theater for a long time and stuff. But then she kind of went down the wrong path with uh, several, you know, with honestly with drugs and all kinds of things like that and kind of ended up in a a bad spot that, uh, that, now she's slowly trying to work her way back out of and stuff so she kind of got off track mm-hmm. my other my little brother is definitely very artistic and stuff but he's like more in a different way he's a he's like a he's obsessed with gaming actually like he's a he's he's a, a like a gaming expert like you know D and D and uh you know mm-hmm. world of work all this that whole culture of things and right. stuff which yeah. i consider to be like it's it's weird like in one way, I feel like, you know, taking all, spending all your time doing that kind of stuff can be like anti-creative in the sense that if it's just like an escape that you never, where you're never really, you know, nothing's materializing from it and stuff, but it's just more like an escape for people to be kind of lazy and and do that. But at the same time, like I embrace, I embrace it when people, when it it becomes people's passion. And it's Mm -hmm. like my brother's passion is gaming and, uh, and he's definitely like working on things that, with his knowledge of gaming in a creative outlet, like he wants, he's making a movie about, you know, gaming and working on cartoons and writing about gaming. Like he's doing things outside of that. And uh, he wants to be a writer, I guess, and like a, a game critic and stuff. He runs like dungeons and dragons at, uh, conventions and stuff. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. funny. Cool. <laughs> so like everybody's like, uh, you know, my family's very quirky and colorful and stuff, but no one's really, uh, is, they don't, you know, I'm like kind of the only one as far as like musically that's really active with stuff, but all of them are very, uh, like, you know, um, kind of like out there type of personality. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take you, uh, back to music again then. Um, 
did you? Uh, I don't. I'm not sure you did, but have you ever uh, scored the uh, movies before? No, I never have. But okay. that's something that would be like that. You know, I've thought about for years, and I would love, love, love to get into. And actually, me and Spencer used to talk about that all the time, and how mm-hmm. um, that was like one of the things that Hello really wanted to do as a band is like you know as a record and stuff is like make one of our if we could you know if there was a movie that was like someone wanted you know wanted our music for we got you know signed up to do something like that basically like make one of our like full albums like basically a soundtrack to a movie it's something we've always been really interested in doing but it's kind of that's kind of one of those things that you can't i mean you know you kind of got to be asked to do it's like it's not something you can kind of just like make happen it's just got the opportunity has to arise but yeah i would definitely love to do that also because like i consider my music like very visual and stuff and like exactly or at least yeah. in, inspired by visuals and by experience like real life experiences that you know are all of the visual element and something i think about when i'm making music all the time so it would in my mind it would make perfect sense to get into that realm but i feel like it's kind of like an in, you know you got to be invited to do that so mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well you've uh the, the the music videos that you've created for the for two of your tracks uh were you know amazing the, yeah. especially that one track with the the clay um yeah on the face oh oh was awesome. spectacular you. yeah and uh you know the music and the the visuals just fit perfectly i mean yeah. I, when i hear the music wow. now i just uh you can just imagine the visuals it's you know it's inseparable wow. yeah that's great thanks a lot yeah that's like You know that's kind of like the only outlet I've had to to just like exercise like uh, you know literal visuals with music is like making those videos and stuff and so yeah, and like all both those were done with like I worked with a couple other people on each one and stuff, but you know they were all done just like with no money and no anything and stuff just to like make it happen mm-hmm. like uh that side of it uh, visually like yeah like the the aspect of music like. visually are like so strong to me in my mind and stuff that you know almost with every song I've ever made and stuff if I listen to it you know and I'm thinking about along those lines it's like I see something and stuff and um, you know like I was saying even from a young age I've been so obsessed on visuals and like visual arts and stuff that it kind of comes pretty natural as far as like getting at least a basic idea of or like seeing something when I hear you know you know uh, when I hear a certain sound or a certain music I like my brain automatically just like sees something even when I'm just in the studio making stuff like even one sound or like recording and stuff mm-hmm. a lot of times I don't even realize it but I'm seeing things that go along with it or scenarios that I don't even know where they're coming from but just like you know things are popping up and stuff with every sound in my mind as far as like a you know uh, you know like an image basically mm-hmm. but yeah so I'd love to get into that but Are you, are you thinking about merging any visual elements in your, uh, in your tour, in this tour? I haven't, uh, I mean, no, actually I, ha- I haven't, you know, like, uh, again, like, I guess, you know, that's like a double-edged thing. Like, I really love bands that, that go all the way with that kind of stuff. Like, um, mm. you know, say like Flaming Lips and stuff like that, like the, the groups that have really put, give it all, like, and make it a real event and a real show and stuff. Mm-hmm. and uh and like an ex- like an overall experience you know when you go see them and stuff that's like I love that and that's awesome and stuff but at the same time I also love when you just go see a band and just like you know smash it out like and it's just raw and like that's it you know what I mean like yeah. so I go back and forth as far as like oh man the big show or like a I mean also I don't have really the resources as financial you know financially mm-hmm. not that you need a bunch of money to make like an interesting visual show or something but you understand what I mean it's like yeah. even right down to like not having a, a vehicle or a trailer big enough to put like props in or put any kind of thing in you know all the logistics and stuff I, I don't have those I haven't had those tools at this point and stuff to like get too into that stuff yeah. into that stuff but I mean If I had the resources to like put on you know bigger size shows like those bands and stuff i I'm sure I wouldn't be able to like fight off the urge to like make it more of like a you know an overall experience that would be really fun i i mean I would love to do that when when is the tour gonna happen well I'm starting to it's gonna probably happen later than you know it's gonna be a little delayed from the release, which I'm not really that worried about I mean it'll mm-hmm. happen when it happens, but I'm just now starting to book europe um 
like for December, and mm-hmm. uh, then I would hope to like at the beginning of the year just start with everywhere else and stuff like that. There's a good, there's a chance also that I'll do some stuff in the states before, mm-hmm. like maybe in November or something like that. But right now I'm looking at starting in December and then trying to go everywhere. You mm-hmm. know, actually I wanted, I would really love to come to Israel and stuff. Mm-hmm. I totally got <laughs> offered to play there once, but uh, it didn't work out in the. Uh, just like, you know, we already had a plan or something like right in that period and we were bummed because we were like, oh man, I don't remember who it was that offered us a show over there, but how hard is it to, to play over there? Uh, not hard at all. Actually, we've been having a lot of artists coming in lately in the past uh, year. A lot. You know? Yeah, that's that's what I've heard. Yeah. Do you, are you involved in putting like things together like that or... Uh, we we do some you know, we help a bit with that stuff, but we know the right people if that's yeah. uh, if that's what you mean. We work in the <laughs> background. <laughs> yeah, I mean actually like uh, I might get a hold of you for something like that because it's. Uh, I mean, generally, do a lot of bands probably do Europe and just fly over from Europe to there, right? Or, um, yeah, they they usually arrive if they're touring Europe uh, from Turkey or uh, somewhere around that area. Uh huh. And do, uh, do do a lot of bands like drive in or do they fly in? Oh, there's no there's, there's no, no way, way to, to drive. drive here. You have to you have to fly. Uh, either um, we're uh, surrounded by enemies. <laughs> the best way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <What's that? laughs> it's you know is israel is uh surrounded by um um arab states and it's not yeah uh, that's what I, f- I figured yeah there's only um a peace treaty with uh two of them so um and to arrive to those countries it's it's problematic as well so unless you uh, it's 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 problematic in either case you, uh, you need to fly here <laughs> yeah i was i was, I was I was aware of that, but I didn't. Um, I wasn't sure if like things had recently changed or something. I wish. That's why I, I wish. Um, yeah. Not 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 in the near future, but yeah. uh, you know we can hope. It's, yeah, of it's course. easier than to tour in Georgia right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, at least you can fly in, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but if there's but, anything yeah. we can help with, we'd love to. You know, it's. Uh, we haven't yeah. seen you live yet, so I think that's uh, there's a lot of uh, audience waiting for you to come here. In the oh, really? Yeah. Awesome, man! I would, yeah. There's, man, there's a great alternative scene here. It's it's amazing, actually. I've, I've got, yeah, I keep hearing about that, and I've, I've, there's a band from there that I've heard that I really like. That Monotronics, or what, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, got he's playing there. Yeah, Monotronics. Yeah, they're yeah. Yeah, they're, they're great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're they're over. Uh, they're, I think they they tour the states a lot. Yeah, I think they're I they're quite they spend long more time in the states now than they do here. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wouldn't blame them. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, cool though. Yeah, but I would love to come there. Great. Uh, I want to discuss uh, Team Sleep. I know. Um, oh yeah, yeah. It's uh, now the first album, as far as I know, was recorded and was dela- the release was delayed for a long time, about yeah. a year and a half or so. We waited a long time for that. Um, yeah, it was a, quite a while. Um, that, that was for a number of reasons, really. I mean, for one, uh, well, generally people just blame because a lot of the demos got leaked and stuff, you know, on the internet. Mm-hmm. So then uh, that kind of made everybody want to start over and like start from scratch and kind of like just ditch all the stuff that had been, you know, leaked, and even if it wasn't the right version of the song or this and that and stuff. Um, a lot of that stuff then just didn't make it to the record because it had already been, you know, whatever, out mm-hmm. and about in some right. form, shape or form or something. So uh, I guess you could say that that was one of the reasons why it was delayed. Um, another one just being, like, really, um, uh, you know, just the conflicting schedules of everybody in the group and stuff, you know, and, and you know, um, uh, Chino being in Deftones and stuff, you know, uh, that's, like, you know, a pretty big... Uh, operation going that they got going over there and stuff yeah. and, you know it's a pretty demanding uh <laughs> demanding band you know of course and that's like you know that takes the front seat for him and stuff understandably mm-hmm. so so you know uh everything kind of needed to be you know every in the sense of that project you know kind of everything came second to deftone so it was like really having to work around their schedule which is very busy and stuff so you know naturally everything gets like delayed like or takes like three times as long when you're waiting on something else you know mm-hmm. but then also um you know the whole that that group's on a major label which notoriously i think everybody knows at this point how kind of tricky that can be as far as like 
you know, getting things done quickly without, you know, all the bullshit of, like, you know, Bureaucracy. Like stuff that doesn't mean anything, you know, right. it's really, like, they, they have a tendency to, in those kind of corporations and stuff to get caught up on things that are just, you know, pretty much Mundane. irrelevant, yeah. useless, and just, like, you know, their, their concept of, like, how things work is, like, I mean, in, in one way, it's like, yeah, it's, they, you know, those, you know, labels like that obviously know what they're doing because they sell millions of records and stuff. But at the other, in the other sense of it, it's just like some of the stuff that they, their ideas of like how of music and stuff are so like off, out of touch and mm. wild and you know just like they're prone to like delay things for the most ridiculous reasons and stuff. So it's kind of like a, like a whole mixed medley of all that kind of stuff is the reason why it's taken so long and also kind of the reason why there's not there hasn't been a second record yet <laughs> <laughs> were you uh, but, planning on releasing a second record did you write any yeah. more material yeah we yeah we talk about it all the time i mean actually we did a tour for a month over here in the states um not that long ago like in, oh, yeah. you know december or january and um and it was really fun and great and you know we would love to do that because you know that group's trippy too because i feel like the amount of talent that is actually existing in that group is is really quite abundant, but it hasn't at all been fully utilized. Like, I mean, I like the first record, I like those first recordings, but mm-hmm. <clears throat> in comparison of like what what the capabilities actually are in the group, it's really not up to like it's really not as good as it could be, you mm-hmm. know. So, um, I'm definitely I definitely get excited to like make something with that group of people, like that lives up to like the amount of talent that exists within the band and stuff. But just finding that time, you know, setting aside that time for that is just proven to be really tricky and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, can't seem fine. Can't seem to find that focus period, focus period, you know,
speaking of uh, labels, you recently signed with Ipecac on your current album. Uh-huh. And uh, maybe you can tell us uh, about how, d- how did it come about? Well, um, I guess initially it came about by... Um, I, I, I did some improv stuff with uh, Mike Patton back in 2004. Yeah. Um, like uh, some shows under the name of Oni Baba, and I just kind of had met him around the Bay Area scene and stuff, and you know, expressed how much, you know, that I was a fan of his and stuff. And then he had actually heard of me and was like really into what I did and stuff. And so I proposed to him the idea of like, even way back then, like, Hey, I would really like to put out a record mm-hmm. with you or work with you, you know, and like in some shape or form. Um, <clears throat> and then, uh, and so I had already started building a relationship with him about putting a record of my own and stuff as early back as that. And then he also put it out there on the table. Well, yeah, you know, if Hella ever wants to put out a record, uh, you know, pretty much, yeah, you know, it's, it's there if you want to do that, you know, and so when, uh, at the time of uh, Church Gone Wild and Trip and Hard and stuff coming out, um, once we put that record out, then we were free of any obligation to any label, so hmm. I remember saying to Spencer, just, you know, oh, well, Mike Patton said that <clears throat> he'd be interested in putting out the, the next color record and stuff, so we signed up with them. And did all that, but like um, in the midst of like in about 2006, when I was going to start my record and stuff, because I knew it was about the time that I was ready to like do something like that, um, I got a hold of him and was like, hey, you know, originally remember when we were talking about doing, you know, my thing and stuff, and he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so it's funny, I, like actually even before I had a relationship or Hella had a relationship with the label, I was already talking to them about doing something for myself, you know. Mm-hmm. And, um, so that's kind of how it all started, just by playing together, really. Uh, were you unpleased with were you not pleased with your uh, previous label before uh, moving on to Epicock um, five or six um, no, no we were I mean we were pleased with that it's mm-hmm. weird like we bounced around so much and for different reasons like and, but none of them being that we were like unhappy anywhere else I think right. it was just more of like you know <laughs> hell is not we don't really have that we aren't that disciplined so we, <laughs> <laughs> we uh we uh, like I think we get excited about, oh, like, what if, you know, and, and things like, to where it's like, you know, like, we're always curious, like, how things are different. So we always want to, like, search different things out, you know, and see what other things are about rather than just stay in the same place and never know what what's different about anything else. So, you know, we've, throughout the years, we've always, and being on it, indie labels and stuff like you know a lot of them just aren't really contracted for more than one record or it's very like a friendship level thing so you know we've never had to we've never had any rules or anything so in completing a lot of records a lot of times like other labels have been like oh would you want to do this oh would you want to put out an ep or hey so we've always been like yeah that seems cool let's see what's going on over here and then we just like do that you know and kind of naturally it just ended up bouncing around a lot but we've never you know, ended a relationship with anybody or anything just because we were unhappy or anything. It's just, I think, us wanting, just us searching for, you know, something new and seeing what, how it would be different, you know. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of why how that's happened. I think, and we've done the same thing musically, for better or for worse, but, you know, that's why I think, I like, all of our records are so different is that we're kind of like a band to where it's like, I think a lot of people, you know, when you're in a band, you're like, sit around and talk and you're like oh that'd be crazy if we did this or that'd be funny if we did this and stuff and but then like people don't do it but we actually like do it because <laughs> 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 like i remember recently someone was asking me why we did a double record like that and stuff and i was just saying that exact thing where i was like you know i'm sure a lot of people joke or talk about like oh that'd be so crazy if we did like something like this but then they're like oh but it's like maybe too crazy or too or you know they're afraid to like you know take a risk or do something totally different or something but mm-hmm. we're actually like we uh, we're actually like a band that does it <laughs> when we <laughs> when we think of something even if it's like really crazy or wild or ridiculous or something we'll just go through with it but that's good that's always keeping things interesting and mm-hmm. i mean that's what you yeah, like to do as you said before things anyway. fresh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what, that's how we that's how we perceive it too. As far as just not you know we never wanted to make make the same record twice ever. So everything's always different. That's the end too. Is like why I'd be excited to you know after having a break, um, it it'd definitely be interesting to see what what came out of it nowadays. But we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, 
What about uh, the touring life? You tour quite a lot, and you play uh, almost every day, as you said. Um, yeah. W do you still find it as exciting as it used to be? I do. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And, like, I mean, in, in some ways, well, it's, it's weird, because I feel like it's just, like, I find exciting is not right. Well, I'm always excited about music. That does, That never disappears, but, like, I definitely, you know, my perception uh, of a lot of things has, has changed, like, in good ways and in bad ways. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, ultimately, I'm definitely just, just as, you know, just as inspired and excited about, you know, being creative and making music, for sure. It's hard not to, like, sometimes it's hard not to, like, see the, the political side of music and and kind of how, you know, how things work that don't have anything to do with music and then the trends of music and all that kind of stuff. It's hard not to get jaded by those things from time to time or mm -hmm. get a little bit disenchanted, not with you playing music, you know, in the, in the purest sense of the word that like I can play in the practice room all day by myself and just get a tremendous joy from that. You know what I mean? So that never changes, but mm -hmm. there is time from time to time. It is, uh, you know, when you just see firsthand a lot of things happening where that are just like not honest or something, or like it's not legitimate. where compromise has to be, ha compromises have to be made. Yeah. Is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah like you know, it, the, I guess it's the same as anything. You know, like the, sometimes, and and you know, I'm just like I'm not like some crazy successful, insane, you know, you know, artist or something. But at the same time, you know, in my modest little world, like the more, and I think in everybody's kind of thing is like, you know, sometimes the more success that you get, the more complicated things get and you start dealing with, the more things you start dealing with that don't have anything to do with music, really. I mean, they do only, but it's, you know, it's a, an extension of music, but it's not actually playing music. And mm -hmm. that's when things start to get um, a little like uh, harder. It can kind of like, for me, put me in, you know, in a weird place or, or kind of change my attitude, but it's, you know, not, not overall, but just like, you know, periodically and stuff. I mean, my, my, my feelings towards playing and like what I do has not changed at all. I mean, it's like, it's Good. what I do. I'm, I'm pretty much a lifer. It's, you know, I don't, there's no other way for me. It's like what I love. So, That's but great. yeah, you, I, I have definitely, I've seen, I see things, you know, certain things that I see differently and stuff like, in a good way, though, I think, like, it's where it's, like, I know I'm not naive anymore, you know, and to everything and stuff like that. But at the same time, I don't feel ultimately jaded or, like, that I can't be excited about about things. I mean, I still feel about a lot of, a lot of, in a lot of ways, I'm still, like, you know, 14-year-old, 15-year-old, like, music fanatic, you know. I'm, like, still, I'm a fan of music, you know. I, I play it, but I'm also, like, just a dorky kid that loves it, you know. So. Are you a music collector as well? I'm sorry, what's that? Are you a music collector as well, as, an, as a music not, enthusiast? Well, not a collector, like, as far as, like, person that... I'm not, like, the one that runs out to the record store and buys, like, the, you know, the limited edition vinyl thing and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, that's... that's People that are like that is radical, but, like, I'm not... Um, I'm not, like, to that extent, but I'm definitely, like, a seeker of, like, music. You know, I'm always listening to it, always looking for new things and, you mm -hmm. know, buying records. Yeah, I mean... I'm not a collector, but I'm a I'm enthusiast. A fanatic, you know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, regarding the uh, collaboration with uh, Chris Goss and um, Jordy White on Goon Moon. Yeah, see, there's one that people probably wouldn't expect. You know? <laughs> Uh, that's I think that's really an interesting combination of uh, characters right there. Yeah. <laughs> I think so too. How was the How was the chemistry in the studio when you when you worked on the the two albums that you've put out? Oh, really fun. Well, the second one is different in the sense like uh, the first one I was like really involved with, kind of like all the way around. The second one I didn't have as much to do with, and that was more of like, I mean, they had all the tracks of me playing with them throughout over all the years and stuff, but. I wasn't around when they were actually putting it together. It just kind of popped out and stuff, so I wasn't quite as like hands-on with that. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> working with both of them, it's like really fun. Like, I mean, they're both awesome people and like really excellent to be around and like, you know, just I don't know, just really good dudes and like, um, and like that was actually a perfect example of like me being like really inspired and like. Um, you know, excited about, like, wow, because that, I mean, obviously knowing how different, like, you know, our world uh, and stuff, it was, yeah. like, really exciting to me, like, to be like, well, what, what would happen, you know what I mean, like, if we work together and stuff, and so, um, all around, that was just, like, a lot of fun time. I actually, like, because I, I met Jordy, like, <clears throat> down in Los Angeles, like, um, like, 2003 and stuff, just through some friends and stuff, and we just started jamming for fun and things, and then, Actually, in the process of making that, I ended up like kind of like living with him for a couple of years. Him and his wow. girlfriend down there, yeah, like sleeping on the couch while we were making that. And then we'd r drive out to the desert and meet meet Chris and like work on it out in the desert studio and stuff. And um, it was just a really fun time, relaxed time. I mean, it was like a period of like we weren't, you know, uh, I mean that material like I think is really fun and 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 good for what it is. But I mean, it's definitely a, you know it's not like my favorite stuff in the world I've ever done, but it's like I'm, I was really just into the experience of doing it and like, you know, uh, just that, the fun of playing with those people and being around them. It's like, great. Fantastic. Uh, were you planning on uh, tour, uh, recording another album in the future? Is that something that might happen? I'm not sure. I think I'm kind of like, I think I've been like phased out of the lineup. <laughs> I <think I'm, laughs> really? I think I got their own, which is totally cool. You know, it's like, I, you know, I don't live down there and it's like, if they want to make it like a serious, you know, and I don't, uh, you know, it's not something that I would have the time to like, um, mm -hmm. you know, to really like make or, you know, make my like a priority or like my own thing, even though I love those guys and totally respect them and they're great and stuff. But you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. it's understandable. I think they, if they want to turn into like more of a serious thing, then they need people where they're at and, you know, that they can work with all the time and stuff. And I'm just not able to do that. And, you know, it's kind of like was an experiment of sorts too, because like I'm probably not even the right person to do that for what they want to do and stuff, you know? So ultimately, you know what I mean? Like, um, so, uh, not, I don't really have plans to, to do, you know, not that I'm, I mean, I would definitely play music with them right. again, no problem, of course, but, but I'm probably not, not as like a good one. Yeah, I'm not really okay. like planning on it. And Chris especially, man, is just such a, I mean, he's, as a, as a producer and like guitars and just like as, as a music man, like as like a musical mind, that guy is like just, he's a genius, he's genius at, at things, you know, he's like, I mean, you might not be able to even get it from those recordings specifically, but just, like, it's hard to explain being well, around he's, he's him. He's done a lot of things. Yeah, he has, yeah. man. And, and just, like, his sound is so... Uh, it's funny, I mean, just from getting to know him and being around him and seeing his ideas, like, happen, like, real time and stuff, it's just crazy. Also, like, the influence he's had on, like, the Queens of the Stone Age and stuff mm -hmm. as a band and as a group, I mean, like, it's, like, those guys are really talented and great as well, but... I really feel like it's like their sound, their whole muse, and like is totally Chris Goss. I mean, like mm -hmm. without him existing, that band I don't don't think would exist or sound anything close to how they sound. He's really like he's really good, especially with just like being like I don't know, just the elements of like rock and roll and like classic rock. Like he just understands that music. You know, he's like is that music? It's pretty hard to explain. He's but the dude's like magic with that stuff. Yeah. Really awesome, inspiring to be around. Yeah, we really like uh, Masters of Reality too. Oh yeah, they're great, man. <laughs> yeah, he's awesome. Um, and Ginger Baker. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> going back to uh, your first solo album, uh, Astrological Straits. Uh, uh -huh. As we said before, it's it's an amazing album, probably our favorite for this year. Um, oh, thank you. 
And uh, I have to ask if you uh, thought or started working about new material for the next solo album. I know yeah, it's really early on, already, but uh, I actually have already started to think about that and try to and um, you know get some solid ideas about that. Like I said, I've already I've been talking to Prefuse seventy three about producing it, and it looks okay. like that's going to happen. So um, I've already begun conceptualizing it with uh, with him and stuff, and thinking about the ideas of, as far as how to go about it and stuff. I, I mean. I don't really have enough to like talk about, you know, direction wise or specifically at this point, but I'm definitely already mapping out that whole aspect of things and stuff. But I'm trying to find, you know, figure out the logistics of like getting, you know, where it's going to come out, all that kind of stuff, and 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 kind of like uh, lock down the, the exacting plans of it and stuff, mm-hmm. and then, you know, then so I can take it from there. But that's my whole goal is to like in between this one coming out and then the next one coming out, like to have, you know, a band together that can function and tour and stuff. I'm just doing one thing at a time, like step by step. Like it's been really hard to put together a group that can support this record, like right at the initial start of it coming out and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I'm not really too worried about it because like I'll get around to it. And even if by the time the next one comes out, you know, like I've already been touring and like, you know, I'll just do it all on top of that one or whatever and stuff. But yeah, it's definitely huge on my mind. I don't want it to, I want it to be sooner than later that I start working on it because hmm. it, it's it's really important to me too to like you know um, I I don't I want to I want to establish like a catalog in the sense that like because this this record to me is definitely not it's not like a one off thing you know mm-hmm. it's not some novelty release for me to where it's like you know like uh, oh yeah I remember the you know just like one you know one record in a sea of all these other records that I've done it's like very much to me like a beginning of starting a discography under my own name you know what I mean something that I would hope would like down the line have like you know you know many many records under the same you know this is the first in like a lot hopefully you know so right. it's mm-hmm. so I'm very anxious to get out another one you mm-hmm. know to kind of like solidify that idea in my mind and in other people's minds you know what I mean as far as like being my own artist so
What is the work process when writing an album? Do you first uh, do the lyrics and then the music, or the, does the music come first? Oh, pretty much every way you can imagine, really. <laughs> I mean, it always starts... I mean, pretty much every idea on this record has started with the drums, that's for sure. Like, I yeah. started... I think that's why it's... it's how it's been different like really different from a lot of other things and everything else that like or a lot of other music is that like the genesis of the music is all started with basically me writing the drum pad it like the the structure drum wise and then it's so it's like in, in a sense like everything that you're hearing was inspired and sparked from the drums rather than like a guitar you know riff or like a a melody or something it's kind of work it works backwards because like you know the drums is what like it builds up from that you know so mm-hmm. that's kind of like a different aspect of uh of uh of working i guess that i don't think a lot of people do that i think gives it like a it's a unique quality you know mm-hmm. and then you know vocally <clears throat> it's kind of like a you know and then how oh, well it's kind of hard to explain because every song's so different and i don't really have any kind of systems or rules to anything so like different things all came about very differently but The main you know the common thread throughout all of it is that it started with the drums so well besides the, the obviously the music I, I really like the lyrics as well it, uh, oh it's really impressive and expressive and uh, it's it smells like something new <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you yeah like um that's one of the like I was saying before like I really love that Uh, that part of uh, of things and like I've gotten even more comfortable with it the more I've done it as far as like singing and just like putting words together and doing that whole kind of thing i I've definitely started to get like a lot of enjoyment out of doing that and really gotten into it so it's, it's kind of it's cool to hear it makes it gives me more confidence to feel like other people are like getting something from it or it's striking a chord with people like it seems like people are like really into it so it makes me feel more you know like it The next time around I'll even have more confidence in what I'm doing and stuff and just kind of like hopefully get more and more comfortable with doing that so. mm. yeah it's great Fantastic. reminds me reminds me of the old Sonic youth somehow I don't know <laughs> the it, lyrics uh, it reminds you, the, what is it the lyrics it, it reminds me of the old Sonic youth uh, tracks really oh, expressive awesome, and artistic and really wow, great. thank you yeah I mean that was definitely it's funny you say that because I, I definitely like was you know when doing it and stuff there were definitely moments where I was like searching for inspiration or like thinking about oh well, how can I how would how would I inflect this word you know what I mean and things like that and just like and mm-hmm. they're definitely a huge inspiration on me as far as the band in general and stuff and vocally too because you know like they're one of those bands where it's like they aren't trained singers as well they just found this place to where it's like um, you know they know how to use their voice and it just sounds natural and like honest and how it sounds good to them but yeah. like as far as like technically trained singers it's like they aren't you know yeah. what I mean so they're very inspiring in that way to where it's like you don't have to be like a crazy singer to like get something across or get you know have someone get something from it or something you know what I mean so yeah. it's cool you say that also lyrically and like uh, singing wise, The opposite end though because he can actually sing is like David Bowie's like a huge influence on me and stuff and a lot of that you know that whole scene and stuff I just love mm-hmm. he's you know his his you know stuff is like a lyricist and just like a singer and like a performance stuff he's like a huge inspiration to me and stuff so <laughs> Classic rock 
Uh, well, again, uh, Zach, we'd like to thank you for this uh, wonderful opportunity, and we'd love to to have you in Israel. And uh, honestly, if there's anything we can help with, we'll gladly gladly do it. Um, oh, thank you very much. Yeah, man, I'll definitely um, I'll be in contact with you uh, how we were originally in contact, and I'll talk to some of those people, um, you know, over uh, over in overseas and stuff about like the trip I'm planning and see how possible it is to like jump over there because I would love to come that would be awesome that would be, be great, great. that would be fantastic yeah. really thank you thank very you much very much St- thanks a lot and good luck with the new album we'll play it uh, and hopefully we'll and see you here yeah awesome thank you thanks so much for your interest <laughs> thank sure you. thing thanks for putting out great music <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it I'm going <laughs> to keep trying to do that <laughs> <laughs> great thanks and have a see great you. weekend yeah you too bye bye I know what you're thinking and you're right
I'm not in the job of the power trap. So you can have that.